without question, one of the great supporting characters in U.S. television history is, of course, Creed Bratton from the U.S. version of The Office. Uh, even the origin story of how Creed Bratton, which is, his, by the way, his real name, got on the show and stayed on the show is a, is a testament to perseverance. But the greatest thing about Creed is that nobody knows why he's there. How is he stuck around this long? Even Creed doesn't really know what his job is. So how, everybody's question is, how are you still there? Everybody who worked in that office, everybody who watched the show is asking, how is this guy still around? But he just stays on forever, regardless of who's there and who's, the, who's the manager, who's not the manager, whatever. Creed is there. Creed is always there, right? The same thing really is true about the traditional media here in, in our society. And traditional media is not dead by traditional media. I mean, newspapers, television, radio, we're going to focus on television and radio specifically, but people have been writing the obituary for these types of traditional medias for, you know, decades and decades. And yet they're still here and they're still important to us. They're still uh, heavily used and watched and, and listened to. And so, um, that's what we're going to focus on today because we can't ignore television and radio at all. By, by no means can we do that. So we need to understand television and radio and how they impact writing and production for um, public, public, public relations, people working in the field of public relations. So to just very quickly answer the question, does traditional media still matter? Absolutely, it does. As you can see from this, this simple chart of the distribution of total television and video usage in the United States in March 2024 by delivery platform, more than half of the total television and video usage came via broadcast and cable uh, media channels. Okay, So uh, while streaming is, is obviously very important and, and other avenues are very important, we can't ignore traditional media because they're still more than half of the way that people get their entertainment, get their news, get their information, get, get everything. Right? So I also just wanted to briefly touch on then what are the advantages of traditional media? If I were to make a case for why this is still important, apart from the fact that, you know, more than half of the U.S. public is using it as their uh, source of, of uh, media. What are the advantages here of traditional media? Because there are some first traditional media has a very diverse audience. When we think about streaming platforms and, and, uh, and, and, you know, even when we get into things like podcasts and, and even really trade magazines and things, those audience are, audiences are very, very specific and very niche, right? They, they, they serve a very specific audience. And uh, so it's what we call fragmentation. The audiences are very fragmented. So they're focusing on a very narrow lane of audience, right? But, but broadcast and traditional media, they focus on a very diverse audience and they have very diverse viewership. So they're reaching people of all ages, of all backgrounds, of all, you know, to, to various degrees, of course, but, but they have a very diverse audience, especially when you compare it to some of the more specific, um, fragmented media types like podcasts and things like that. So they're a very diverse audience in traditional media. Uh, traditional media is also more credible. Now you can, I know there's been a, a, a barrage of attacks on, on traditional media, especially news media lately, and people questioning the credibility of news media and so forth. And you can have that discussion all day. That's fine. Um, but I'm telling you that traditional media is still perceived as vastly more credible than things like podcasts or, or, or even news programs that have a very, very specific type of, of uh, focus and of objective, right? Um, that traditional media sources are still seen as more credible when people want to know what's happening, really want a realistic, legitimate look at what's happening in the world. They go to their uh, traditional media sources, specifically their local traditional media sources, as we're going to discuss here in a second. So credibility is, is much higher in traditional media. Traditional media has more of an emotional impact. It's, it's more local. Again, we're going to, that's the next point here really, but uh, it has this emotional impact. We, they tell stories and, uh, and have the ability to tell stories in a, in a way and in a scope that other sources do not and do not pursue. Right. So the emotional impact of, of uh, traditional media is much higher than other types of newer media. Okay, something I've touched on now a couple times. I probably should add this is my first bullet point, but there's oftentimes a local connection with tra traditional media, your local news sources. So again, if you want to talk about the credibility of 
you know, Fox News, MSNBC, those types of things. Okay, fine. We, we can have that debate and, and discuss that and discuss news versus opinion programming and so forth. But you don't have that as much with your local programming. So your, your local television stations, your local news, your local radio stations, there's that local connection. Not only are they giving you news that's closer to home and that's important, but they're also that increases their credibility because they're, they're not doing as much of that other stuff of the opinion stuff as some of the, the broader network um, channels are right. So, so even more so in local media, local traditional media, television, radio, newspapers, you have significantly enhanced credibility and you're getting information that is really more uh, of concern to you in terms of uh, it affecting your daily life. Okay. So, um, people are in essence, egocentric, meaning we care most about those things that uh, impact us uh, most directly. And so uh, getting our news and getting our information and, and, and getting our uh, things from local uh, sources just makes sense because it's going to have more to do with us. Okay. So lots of advantages to working with traditional media. Now, again, we don't want to have that be our only source, but we cannot ignore traditional media as public relations professionals. You've got to use and, and leverage traditional media in every bit as much as you would any other type of, of media to, uh, to attain your objectives, whatever your objectives are for that campaign or that purpose. So what do we need to know about working with traditional media? I'm just going to be brief here because we've talked about this some in, in previous videos too. And so this has been a part of our discussion as we've gone along, but working with traditional media, first of all, we need to know your audience and that means know their audience, right? Um, these people serve a very specific audience and again, it's not as fragmented or as niche um, in the in the, in the topic necessarily, except that oftentimes locality, if you want to see that as fragmentation, um, then that would be a fragmented audience. But, but we need to know who their audience is, who are they trying to reach? Right? Because if we're trying to reach who they're trying to reach, that's going to be more appealing to them. Right? So we have to know, have to know our audience and what are they watching? Where are they at? What, what, you know, are they watching traditional media? And, uh, now if you're trying to reach only, you know, Gen Z and Gen Alpha people, then they, they do tend to, to watch more, um, social media and, and, you know, YouTube and, and, and Twitter slash X, whatever, um, they tend to be there more. So if that's your specific audience, then, then you should probably leverage that more. But if it's anything else, we have to know our audience to know who we're trying to reach specifically so that we can, um, utilize that media appropriately. So we have to know our audience because we need to know where to go find them. And so that we know that we're um, speaking the language of that, that uh, media outlet in what we're trying to pursue, that it's going to be appealing to their audience because their audience is our audience. Fresh is best, meaning um, newer is best. You want to lead the pack. You don't want to be lagging behind. You want to be new information, novel information, interesting information. You want to have a different angle, right? They don't want to report on the same thing everybody else is or, or have on their network the same thing everybody else does. They want to have people come to them because they have something different, right? So that's why you see, especially on the news uh, side of things, you see they can't... Uh, the, they're so anxious to pull that breaking news trigger, right? Everything is breaking news. In fact, that's kind of lost a little bit of its luster because everything is breaking news now. Right. Uh, but, but that's why, because they want to pull people in. This is breaking. This is happening now. This is fresh. This is new and interesting and novel. Right. So fresh is best, except that fresh and exclusive is even better. So fresh is great, but, and it is the best, but, uh, but when you combine that with exclusive, meaning, meaning not everybody else has this, if you can sell that angle to somebody, then that's going to make it even more enticing because to be the only one that has that is significant. I mean, even just look at television programming, right? It was a big deal for a long time that Netflix had the office speaking of the office that they had the office for the, on a streaming platform. Right. And it was a big deal when, um, universal said, okay, your contract is up. Now we're going to move this to Peacock because we have our own thing over here. So they were able to say now the only place you can watch the office on a streaming platform is on Peacock. It's exclusive. It's interesting. It's, 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 uh, it's a way to draw people in. So fresh and exclusive is even better. If you're, if you're spreading it around a lot, then people aren't going to necessarily be as interested because it's not going to be, um, the only place that it's available. People can go anywhere to watch it and they don't really want to compete as much in that way. Yeah. 
And when you go to traditional media, it is best to already have the full story, have as much developed as you can, make it as easy as possible for them to do this. If you can uh, share with them the entire thing, right, as a package, and you've already got it put together, and that doesn't mean they don't do their due diligence or whatever, but, but the more you can have it already assembled and put together and, and just make their job easier, um, then the, the, the more likely they are to pursue that, right? When your friend has a birthday, you don't go to your friend and say, hey, happy birthday, I brought you all the ingredients for this cake so that you can make it right. You don't do that. That's rude. Why would they want to make their own cake? Even if you give them the ingredients, that's just a, that's, that's kind of a jerk move, right? You take them the cake. You don't take them the ingredients to make the cake. The same with traditional media. You take them the cake as fully formed and baked and decorated as you can. Right. And then you don't take them the ingredients to the cake and say, here, here's something for you to put together. They've got a lot going on. They're probably not going to do that. If it's, if it's not legitimate, breaking news, they're not going to do that on their own. So the more you can take the cake fully formed, fully baked, um, then the, the more likely you are to have success in reaching them um, and getting them to, um, to, to help you with that, to put that on the air. Got yeah, a couple last tips for using traditional media and by using, I mean, lever leveraging and, and working with and doing all these things with traditional media, right? First of all, Anything we do with traditional media and really anything we do in public relations, but specifically anything with traditional media, we need to do it from the audience perspective. If we are preparing something for radio outlets or even podcasts or something like that, we need to remember this is an audio only uh, medium, right? So we can't have a bunch of visual aspects of this and say, well, you just need to imagine this. No, no, no. We've got to prepare it in such a way that we understand that the audience is only hearing this. But if the audience is seeing, if it's television or if it's video of some sort, we have to prepare it knowing that the audience can see it. We can't just ignore all of those visual elements then, right? We've got to, we've got to see it from the audience perspective. How is, how is the audience going to receive this? And, and as such, how can we best reach them uh, and, and prepare things so that it's reaching them in the most effective way? So we've got to work backwards and see it from the audience's perspective first. We also have to expand our arsenal. Again, thinking specifically about different mediums and different channels, uh, different outlets, we've got to expand our arsenal and think about, think differently about how we approach um, these things. So we've, when we work with radio, for example, we have to really focus on language choices because again, the audience can't see anything. So, uh, so the words that we choose are critically important. So language choice, creating those mental pictures, thinking in sound bites, people don't always listen to the radio for long periods of time. So sound bites, what's going to catch them and then using um, what are known as ANRs or audio news releases, right? Not just a traditional paper news release. And then asking the radio pr to, to put something together or read it on their news. We can help them out by preparing an ANR, having some audio clips or having a full audio story we've already put together. Again, bake that cake for them, send it to them. They can use all of it. They can use part of it, you know, let them know what they can and can't do with it. But but we can do that. And, and then we can not only control that narrative a little more, but we're making it easier on them, making it a little more likely that we're going to get it on the air. Right. So, um, so we need to think about those things for radio specifically understanding again, the audience can't, can't see anything. They, they're only hearing it, um, or even something like a podcast, but we've got to expand our arsenal and really, if we're going to do something with radio, we've got to expand the tools in our tool belt, as we talked about in a previous video, right? We've got to expand our language. Uh, we've got to expand our ability to paint that mental picture and to create sound bites and, and use ANRs. We've got to expand our, our, our arsenal and, and uh, add to our toolkit with those things. But if we're working with television, we need to do a little differently, right? We need to think a little differently. We need to expand our, our you know, understand visual impact. We need to understand the technical elements that may be involved in either of these, but, but TV has more because it is visual. We need to understand the abbreviated time frame. We don't have all day for this. We know that people's attention spans when they're watching even TV are getting shorter and shorter. That's why the average uh, viewing time for a YouTube video, for example, is under five minutes. And that's why hour long traditional news programs are kind of a thing of the past, right? You have um, a shorter you know, half hour programs now for local and national news. And even though we have 20, you could say, well, we have 24 hour news. Now it's not just an hour, it's 24 hours. But look at that 24 hour news and it's segmented into shorter segments, right? It's, it's like five minutes at most on a segment. Uh, so, uh, so there's an abbreviated time frame. We have to be able to condense to tell a full story and to tell a complete story and tell an interesting story, but in an abbreviated time frame. Okay. 
We also need to be more conscientious of choosing the right spokesperson. Uh, we need to choose somebody who is, who can tell that story and who, who can, uh, you know, look the part and can sound the part and so forth. So there's these things that go into these things. We need to expand our arsenal and be able to uh, understand these mediums and, and, and master these different elements of things as well. But sometimes we, we don't necessarily um, have that in our, our toolkit just yet. Uh, so we need to also be willing to use the expertise around us. All right. Use the expertise around you. If you know somebody who has some experience in television or has some experience in radio or understands those, those mediums better than you do, then call on them, then call on them, right? Don't be afraid to pull other people in. It takes a village, as they say, right? To, to, to it takes a village to bake a cake. I'm mixing metaphors now, right? But, but it, uh, but it takes a village. It really does call on that expertise. Most of the best work I've ever done professionally has been in partnership with, with one or more other people because it, it, it adds to my skill set. Then the things that I don't have, they can fill in the gaps. There are things that I do really well. And there are things that I don't do as well. So I try and pull in people who do those other things well and complement my skills. So use the expertise around you. If you're newer to TV or radio and, you, and, and interacting with these different kinds of traditional mediums, then call on some people who do have that expertise and that experience uh, to help you with that. Okay, so last note here. We know, again, previous discussions that the, the purpose of the media is to make money, right? And that's not a, that's not a criticism. They, uh, the media is a business, right? Most of these things are businesses. Their, their intention is to make money. That's what their, their, uh, their stakeholders expect them to do. So the purpose of the media is to make money. They do that by selling advertisements primarily in traditional media. Uh, the primary form of, of income for traditional media is selling advertisements, right? So the best way that we can help them do that, right? We want to help them accomplish what they are trying to do. The best way that we can do that and that they can do that, the way that they do that is by providing an audience that wants to see those ads or that is more likely to respond to those ads and then they can sell it to the advertiser, right? So our goal really is to make that connection for them, help them make that connection. But uh, so they're, they're connecting an audience uh, to advertisers to make money. Uh, our job is to know that audience and to help them then reach that audience with information and, and events and things that are going to be something that audience wants to see and is interested in and help them pull in that audience so that they can uh, appeal to those advertisers, right? It's as simple as that. So it comes back to knowing our audience, both uh, the audience uh, the viewership, but also the audience of that media outlet, right? So that we know what that is they're working toward and can help them do that. Okay. So, in summary, television, radio are not dead, not by a long shot. They're still alive and kicking. They're still, it's a, it's a changing uh, media landscape for sure. It's evolving and, uh, and the television radio of today are not the television and radio of 10 years ago, or, or certainly not 50 years ago or so forth, but, um, but they are still alive and kicking. They're the Creed Bratton of the media world and we cannot ignore them. We do so at our peril. If you have questions about how to best use and leverage um, television and media and television and radio uh, for your and write for them specifically as a public relations professional, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope this gives you a new appreciation for the importance of understanding those mediums and how we can best write and produce as public relations professionals for television and radio.